The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, 877-927-6648. Dow's up 200 points at 27,058. This is very interesting. That rotation, remember, we spoke about the Dow, and I've talked, spoken about it for ages, saying the Dow 30 is really a perfect emblem of the entire uh, economic cycle. It has, uh, I mean, American Express... Is that, is that an industrial? No. Uh, Caterpillar? Yep, that's an industrial. Is Cisco an industrial? Mm, I wouldn't say that. Is uh, Chevron an industrial? Mm. Boeing? I would put it in the category probably of the industrials, a big, heavy, in, you know, this is a company that needs just a lot of product, a lot of metal, a lot of everything. Um, Pfizer? Nike? So the to me, the Dow is at a perfect mix, and that shows today because the S&P is up way less. It's up eight, and the Dow is up 200, and the IWM is, in fact, down, and the QQ is up a little bit. So this is – when people ask me, they say, why do you always spend time on the Dow? I mean, there's S&P and 500 and the New York Stock Exchange 2000, uh, the Composite Index over 2000. The, even the index 100, QQQs 100, I spent time with them all, believe me. But the one I talk about every single day and I have for the last many decades, every single day, a market day that is, um, it's the Dow. Because on the news, what do they say? The Dow is up, the Dow is down. And I think it's a focal point. But I, I like it because I think it should be called the Dow 30, not the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It should be called the Dow 30. And it really is a, a perfect mix for this environment. Procter & Gamble, defensive, travelers, uh, insurance, uh, United Health. It's everywhere. Goldman Sachs, Home Depot. I mean, it's everywhere, okay? Uh, Coca-Cola. Uh, you know, what can I say? Apple. Uh, what we're looking at here is that this break to the upside if it holds into tomorrow and over the weekend, what I've said to, to here on the air and to subscribers, I'm anticipating because of the waveform, getting to D, E, and F is where you've got to start expecting some kind of a consolidation. But at the same time, I've made it clear that if the Dow closes above 27,270 in the next, in this period, probably I should say in the next week, that would mean that the E that I'm looking at in the weekly chart is has the potential to have an instant restart and be E slash A, making the low of 20, uh, uh, 26,400 very important support. But that's different to if we start to fail here, because then we could go down deeper than that. Or we could go down to 25,000 if there is a whole flourish of activity that turns into negatives. And that, that could happen here because we have good yields rising instead of falling as you would expect. All right, let's get to the numbers. Here we go. The, the Dow is as broken out in the 27,000s. I had shown this yesterday. Let's see what it is today. I haven't actually opened it today. Shows 26,999 as resistance and 27,160 is the next resistance. So it's right, and you've seen the other times there's been a resistance area. Took a little while, but eventually it did take a, a bit of a dive after that. Um, the S&P right now, as I said, the S&P is in leg, here we go, leg E, the extended leg E. And uh, yesterday it started leg E. The high was 20, uh, to 3,002.98. Hey, wait a minute. The high today is 3,002.33. It hasn't extended that. It's still only the leg E with a chance of a peak E today. The MACD is good. Stochastic is 85% is good, below than it was just uh, four days ago. So then we've got to watch the QQQ, one, two, three. The QQQ is the index 100, trading up 0.63 at 193.19. What's really important about this, it has gone to a leg F. The MACD is good. Stochastic is very good at 88%. 
I got to watch this daily because the weekly chart is very strong in leg D, and the monthly is bumping right into what I would have expected to be resistance. It's actually a tad above it. Where's the resistance? Automated Chapman Wave resistance level 193.7, 193.20, and now I've got another one 195.47. And 195.69. So yes, it could go a little high, but it's getting within a really uh, close proximity of, of a lot of resistance points. Uh, I forgot to look at the S&P resistance points. Chapman Wave Automated. Here we go. What does it say? The S&P is at 3,000 right now, and I've got 3,027, 3,016, and 3,020. 3, Just above a lot of resistance levels. Okay, IWM, as I said, was lagging quite badly, but I want you to show you the gold contract. Gold contract, remember my expression, a rectangle formation can see prices last a lot longer than your patience. And here we are, gold looked like it was going to break out uh, a few days ago, above the 1442.90, high of the 25th of May. It pulls back to 1384.7, comes around the corner, has a rally and goes all the way back to the top, but it Cannot break 1442.90, substandard about 1440, uh, 40, 40, 41, I believe. Then it comes back down, it looks like it's going to break down, and it turns and it stops right at the 14 period moving average, and it comes down to 1387.5. Uh, uh, you take out 1380 uh, on. on uh, you close below that, and now you're underneath. But my suspicion is we'll chop around here a little bit longer. This pattern says, yep, there's a good chance that you've got an inside, um, an inside buy signal that could go towards the top again, maybe even sneak just a little bit above it, but then you'll come back in, and at some point you should start to trade below the rising rectangle formation. That's really the issue. A close below 1384 would signal that uh, the upside is done for now and needs more time, and that weekly chart will take a little uh, a little longer before you can break above into the 1443 level. Now, uh, just a couple of things because I, I wouldn't be surprised if we are looking at uh, some kind of resistance here that's starting to kick in. How the Dow closes, it certainly went higher than I anticipated for subscribers, but we don't mind. We're still long. We've got a we've got a plan, and that plan would would. Uh, start to um, maybe take a little bit off, whatever it is, and maybe even go short. I don't know exactly how it is going to work because it has to do with numbers that have to be hit. So I'm planning that the, most of the gains have been made from the June 3rd low where we got in and that now this is going to be a choppy. I said this a week and a half ago. I said the second week of July should see a really choppy, maybe change in trends in many areas, many sectors. And that's going to be very important to what happens. Maybe gold. I mean, look at the dollar. The dollar should have plummeted much lower. The dollar at 9701 should really be at 9650, testing the 200 period moving average. It still could do that. I'm just saying it's a little surprising after yesterday's news that it hasn't. And look at this the TLT, this is the Lehman 20 year T bond fund, made a peak G top. That was a 1330. 133.51 was the high on the 20th of June. Uh, 134.29 was the high on the 3rd of July. Uh, this is a PG, and we're back into the rectangle formation. If uh, the TLT breaks under, one, closes under 130, that would be a pretty significant top because that weekly could be coming down to the 129, 128 area. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman Dow's up 180. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $197 a month with the risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. All right, we're back. I had a question from BJ in the den. Um, folks, you should try the den. It's just, I mean, it's just an amazing number of people that give such valuable information there. It's really a, a great source uh, for intraday trading or uh, just getting information. So the S&P, the, well, the question is, uh, hi, Basil, can you show the S&P daily chart with the levels again and go over the short and intermediate term support and resistance? Uh, we should be watching. Thanks. So, yeah, PJ, this is what I'm looking at. You see, yes, the 10 minute on the left, 3,003.05 is a resistance. You start off at 29.94 as a support and then 29.88. That's way down. The 120-minute chart actually only has 30.10. Let me just check this out if it goes on the left. 30.10 and 29.55. Those are really big parameters. I mean, down to the downside, but upside 30.30. Then the daily chart has uh, the ones I discussed in the Dow. It's the same sort of thing. Here you go, 30.16, 30.20, and 30.27. <clears throat> Monthly chart is way up at 30.99. I think that has to wait. I do believe that will be a target <clears throat> at some point. 29.63 and 29.80 were the monthly resistance levels. Now, we've gone above that, but this is still the month of July, so it has to see what happens. And the next thing is way up at 31.84, an out outlier. Uh, so that's what I'm looking at. But on the support side, you can see that there's very little. It's more resistance that we're looking at. That says if we do reverse down, you have to wait for something to be generated and that kind of opens it up. But then what happens is I start looking at former resistance levels as support, but that doesn't come in uh, until uh, quite a bit uh, lower down. So I would just use other techniques. And on the downside, what I'd be looking at is the 200, the, sorry, the nine period exponential moving average at 29.76. Then the 14 black line on the left in the daily is the 14 period uh, at black. 9 period, 14 period exponential moving average at 29.62. Those are the levels. But my, my thinking here is if at any point in the next week, I'd say maybe weaken a little bit into the following week. So not next week, but into the week afterwards, Monday or Tuesday of the following week, 20th, uh, what is that, 20 something. Um, if we are starting to trade, it should happen sooner. But I'm giving it all the way out for another nine sessions, let's say, nine, 10 sessions. If we start to trade under 29.42, somewhere around 29, in the 29.40s, 
that would define clearly that we've made some kind of a peak here. This, the MACD should then have turned down and crossed negative, and the stochastic at 85 should be around about 72%. And that'll suggest the daily, at least, has set in motion some kind of a sell signal. But I have to wait for the weekly. The weekly is still very strong at this particular point. Hope that helps you. Question, oh, Mike in Ormond Beach. Mike, how are you? Hi, Basil. I've got a question on AMD. Do you think today we possibly made a double top? So this is a good question because um, AMD trading at 33.45 advanced micro devices in the semiconductor area has made a very interesting pattern. I meant to do this the other day, and then for some reason I forgot about it. I saw it right away and then just completely forgot. What I always do for those of you who watch me uh, um, in the daily show doing my charts, if you see anything that resembles a straight-up move, like a flagpole that starts to make a kind of a flag formation, I invariably say, hey, watch this, because the high that was made in September of uh, 2018 at 34.14, that is going to be very important. That was also a peak uh, F in the monthly chart. And it came down to 16, got cut in half, exactly in half, or a little more, actually. And then what I always say is, watch this, because if it holds support and the MACD and stochastic start to rally, we should see a chap wave inside buy towards uh, towards a D or even um, uh, towards the old high. Well, that was such a big move that it took a while, but eventually we did go all the way to 3430 so it went to a slightly higher high, and I've got this as an alternative count F slash B. I think this is really a B and that we should be making a C. So here's the answer to your question is, I looked at advanced micro devices a couple of days ago. It was down, it was round about, I think it was just under 31 before the move four days ago. And I thought, hey, this is looking very good. This is telling me about the semiconductor index that maybe some of the, some of the worst is already out the way. Maybe the billings ratio is starting to improve. And I was almost going to have this as a buy for my subscribers, just as a short-term trade towards that 30, uh, 34 level. Never did that. Um, and the MACD and stochastic have improved. Everything about this so far says that the double top, talking about it, of 34.30, let me just type that in so I don't forget, 34.34 was the most recent high at peak D. That was around about June the 9th, 10th. And then it pulls back to the 29, 28th and something level. Now it's trading at 33.40. Now, let me just ask you a quick question. I'm going to answer you. But I also want to, do you have a position in this? Well, I'm looking at it for a possible short, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking it could at least pull back to like the 14 period exponential moving average. Okay. Um, so this is what I'm going to advise, and it's already gone. So 34.30 was the high back in uh, early in mid June. And now we're into mid-July, or just about, and the high is 34.03, and it's making a slightly lower high today. Now, the question is, would this be an alternate count E slash B, or even maybe a C if it does it tomorrow without any new high, going to 34.30? But look at the MACD. The MACD is not as good as it was back in that 34.30 peak D high. Oh. But it really is very, very strong. And look at the stochastic. Yes, the unbalanced volumes turned down a little bit, but the stochastic's at 95%. So I'm going to say to you, if because of the way the action of the weekly chart, the steady stair-step move walking both the 14 period and the nine period green, nine period moving averages as key support like a trampoline, and because the monthly chart has that same uh, pattern where I would almost put in a cup formation with a retest of the highs, and it's kind of done that, I like what I'm seeing here. I, I, I've had a tough time getting reversing from the short position and then get, taking everything off the SMHs and actually having gone, should have gone, I should have just switched along and said, take me where you want. I don't care. And that's kind of what I would be doing with advanced micro devices right now. I'd say, hey, if you're long, just stay long. Let's see how it deals with the 34s because I don't see anything actually negative. I understand exactly what you're saying because if it does t double top here, 
then at least you see a, should see a pullback to the 32, maybe the 31 level. Wow. Um, I don't think I can comfortably answer you right now because there's just too much of a chance that if it makes a high above 34.30 and closes even close to that high, I'm just going to have to say there's a chance it can go a little higher. Um, let me just, if you don't mind, I'm going to look at the SMHs. See, the SMHs are up 49 cents, 50 cents. They stuck. They're not doing it. Let me look at advanced micro, I mean, AMT. Um, this is applied materials. Yeah, is that going to go to a D? Oh, okay, I think I know what to do. Um, you know what? Are you able to hold through the break, or you want to just yeah. listen? Yeah, you I hold can. through the break? I, I can for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you, is that a yes? Yeah, I can hold through the break. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a plan of action. That's the best thing. I'll be right back, folks. Dow's up 193, and Advanced Micro is down 37 cents. We'll talk about AMD when we get back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. I'm pleased I had a little break because it gave me a chance to look at advanced micro devices. Just very briefly, I know that you don't have much time. I just wanted to mention that um, advanced micro devices has this habit. I'm squeezing this chart. Look at this. Uh, this one only goes back to 2000. It used to go back way back. 
I don't know why it doesn't. Okay, so it's had this, um, where it's gone to the 40s and then it's plummeted down to the single digits. Then it's gone to 42 again in March of 2006 and it plummets down to uh, almost uh, almost uh, single digits, uh, like three. And then it pl pl goes up to a peak D yet again and then it comes back down. Then it goes up to peak D and it goes down all the way to round about, I think the low was just in... Uh, somewhere around September of 2015, $1.65. So it has a habit of doing it. This is the first time that it's gone twice back up to the high. So I, I like this action. Something's going on here with advanced micro devices that's different to other times. I'm going to say to you, I feel comfortable saying, hold off a moment. I'll look at it again tomorrow, and I'll look at it again on Monday. But my thinking is that unless it starts to close under 32.50, and it's at 33.45 right now, I kind of like the way it's acting. Um, if it does have a pop tomorrow, then I think it's going to go a little higher. Then I can expect a D. And by next week, I think it's ready to pull back. But right at this point, I think it's one of the stronger of the semis. I'm, I'm inclined to say, uh, um, Mike, I don't know if you're still there. But I'm yeah, I'm inclined yeah, to say hold off just to have a little patience. I think you'll get an opportunity to have a, a deeper pullback. But right now it's just holding too well for that. I hope that okay. helps you. What? Yeah. Do you have time for one other quick question? Quick um, question away. Yes. If you were going to look at one of the indices to short, which one do you think would be the best? The IWM. Yes, I think the IWM has been the weakest. My my concern here is that if the others start to come down, IWM has actually held in a very steady way. It's been lousy, but it hasn't really broken down. So my 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 I would say if on any big pullback in the next two days in the general market, if I, the IWM actually goes together, if you see them start together on the same percentage down then the IWM is probably going to go from the 155.13 area. The big test is 153 to 152. If it takes that out, I think it's going to go uh, quite a bit lower into the 149 area. But um, you, you need to see that it doesn't do that crazy thing. You know, sometimes it's stronger when the market's weaker, and sometimes yeah. it's weaker when the market's stronger. So, mm -hmm. yes, but I'll tell you what I am looking at. The QQQ is at a particular point now where if it does start to pull back, if the Q's actually at 193.02 in the next week, a week from tomorrow, if they've gone below 180, 188, I think it's telling us that most of the indices are going to suffer some kind of hemorrhage as a, a consolidation takes place. But you do need the Q's to actually be pulling back quite sharply to see that in the K, XLK, XLK, which is the, uh, that kind of goes with your semiconductor index, is in a leg E right now. That's at 80.73. If you see the star to trade under 78.50, together with the Qs coming down, it says, okay, be careful. We've got a couple of weeks here of, of, of negative activity. But if you do see the IWM actually come down together in the same percentage on the same time, in other words, on, on any particular morning, if they're all coming down, then IWM should be one of the weaker ones, even if it tries to rally. Okay, well, thank you very much, Basil. Hope that helps you. Thank you very much for calling. Always appreciate good good observations, Mike. And that was Mike in Ormond Beach. We're looking at advanced micro devices. Let me just type this in here. So we've got apples to apples. Yep, leg E up in the XLK S&P Tech Spider Fund. Question about SSRM. SSRM. That sounds so familiar. SSR. Where am I typing that? In the wrong place? SSRM. Um, Basil, SSRM, what say you? Nadal versus Federer in semifinals. What do you say? Nadal versus Federer. Yeah, but that's on grass. So that's going to be interesting. SSRM is SSRM Mining Inc. Yeah, you see, a lot of these stocks are doing the same thing. They're making the cup formation. And at 13.71, I'll make it real clear. I'm not going to do all the notation. It's A, B, C, D, it's E, F, it's F in the weekly chart. So any breakout above 
$15.17 that holds would be really positive and that'll help the monthly chart. So what, what these stocks are saying, the gold stocks are saying that many of them, I'll do this, I don't, I don't know this one, but the pattern's very familiar because a lot of them have it. I can see this kind of pattern. I can even see it making another cup formation and uh, maybe even a smaller one. But if it starts to trade and hold in the 1427 to 1433 area, that's on a closing basis, that would make the weekly strong enough to say that it's going to challenge in this particular phase, not later, but now, the 1570 high of the 20, week of the 22nd of February. And that is, let me see if I can say it again, SSR Mining Inc. But my favorite one, which we don't have, unfortunately, that I like to look at, has taken out the left side 11.65 high. It's gone to 11.66 today by one penny. There's still a cup formation. But look at the technicals here. So far, they haven't confirmed the new recovery high. ASA is a mining. It has, I think, five of the, of the South African miners, ASA gold and precious metals. So, um, and you do, I know, Peaky, you have the ASA because I had mentioned it a long time ago and you liked it. Uh, but for some reason, I just, uh, mainly because we had the dollar and the dollar's done so well. But it's not, of course, the, in a short term basis, some of these have done better in two weeks than gold in the long term because, you know, currencies take a long time to really move 10% or more. Okay, so yeah, so this is what I'm looking at at 11.55, down six cents. ASA mining is above the 200 period moving average of the weekly chart. And this is all I can say is I'm going to do this as an oval for now. Usually I like to do it as a rectangle. I do it as an oval because I think it's making a pattern that says the 200 period moving average of 11.26 is now key support, but you can go again below it and you can go above it. And this 11.26 is likely to be a magnet over a period of three to four weeks going higher and then coming down and then coming back to the 200 period moving average. So gold is holding very well. It's acting very well. And um, yeah, I, I actually wouldn't look at the, the short side of gold. It can consolidate and GLD, GDX is the, uh, the gold miners vectors, uh, gold market vectors, gold miners ETF. And that hasn't, oh yes, it has. 26.25 was the high of around about the 24th, 25th. And it's gone to 26.28 today. So yes, it has broken up, but it's having a tough time closing above it. But this does mean that it started a leg AB. I'm going to call this a leg C rather than a G slash C. I think this is still very good. So gold is acting very well. And that says to me that the dollar could take a breather. I don't see why it shouldn't take a breather. It's had a really good move. And it's really been taking a breather almost for a year. Look, DX, no, let me just check that out. For, I mean, all year. I shouldn't have said for a year. But where does it go back to? It goes back to November, December. Oh, I'm right. Yeah, it's it's actually about eight or nine months. It's just been stuck in this range between 98 and uh, 95s. And that can go on. I do think you'll get a leg D above 98.37 in the dollar index at some point. And if it starts to break into the high 90. It goes into the 98, 100, par becomes a target. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Conditions Hour. Dow's up 196 right now. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, right, folks. So the two minute chart shows that made a peak F right at the high of 3,006.75. Pull back to the 200 period exponential moving average, trying to find some support. Uh, we'll see. Just give you parameters. A close on any uh, two minute bar that holds for three bars, in other words, over a period of about 10 minutes. If it's moving above 3,008, that would be really good action. But if there is a sudden slide later in the day underneath 3,000 to 3,003.75 right now, under 2998, if there's a sudden slide, you could have a weak close after this really uh, interesting uh, day. And one of the reasons is that you don't really have, uh, not everything's working in unison. All right, so EUR, USD, this is the euro dollar currency pair. Oh, wow, it's given back all the gains from uh, this early, uh, earlier, this, well, overnight into this morning. And uh, it's down at 1.1249. <sighs> wow, it's really struggling. I, I have to tell you, I still like the dollar for 2019 going into 2020, at least for 2019. I think it will make higher highs. Um, U, or USD, what is that? USD, uh, 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 just if you don't mind, I need to see. Oh, the person I was waiting to hear from. It's okay. I will call back. Um, USD, JPY. Uh, let's go from a 108.45, a leg, leg C, probably a peak C here. It's just in the lower range. Um, I still think the dollar is the currency. It is the United States economy. That's what the dollar is. It isn't about bonds and all sorts of things. It's about demand. GBTC, question about that. You remember yesterday I said I think it's going to be pulling back. It did pull back. It went almost to the 14 period moving average of 14.47. Remember, that's why I said 14.20 to 13.90. It's kind of the area that was the questions uh, we had our um, dinner get out of it uh, at the high yesterday. And I said, okay, don't have to rush. It should come back. Even if it bounces off the low, it should come back. And I think, yes, a, a Bitcoin Investment Trust, I believe it's in a, in a range now. It's in that rectangle range. You know what I'd be doing? Ha hold on, have patience. When it gets down to the low 13s, it could have a bouncing all the way to the high 16s. Just touch 17. And then it, as soon as it looks like it's going to break out, it could come back down again. So it could be in a choppy, choppy sideways action. Um, now... 
Uh, what's the symbol on that? Oh, that's uh, somebody else. Okay. So now let me do this. I want you to talk about, I had a question here about um, high-grade copper. High-grade copper had a very nice day yesterday. Really one of the best days it's had in quite a while. That's because it's had a lot of lousy days. Trading at 2.686. So the qu what was the question? So Sean wants to know, could you look at HGU 19 chart? Yeah, I'm going to look at, if you don't mind, I, I, they're both exactly the same. They're trading almost, the chart pattern looks exactly the same. So I'm going to use the continuous just for the moment because I've got it all notated. I don't, I think copper has a problem. I think later on, towards the end of the year, maybe October, maybe even in November, that's where I got a feeling that some of these commodities are really going to start kicking to the upside. And that would include wood, which is WOOD, which is the uh, iShares Timber and Forestry ETF. Has had a nice bounce, but if you look at the uh, weekly, it's got this arch that goes to a lowercase m, lowercase h to a lowercase m. I'm putting the two together. So I'm just going to say to you, uh, I'm going to go to your question, HG. I think you said, did you say you? That's a little, uh, oh, okay, you. All right, if you're doing you, I'll do you. Uh, you do you and I'll do you. So trading at 2.6865. I'll do this. If you see it rally above two, and I have to go into the nitty gritties here, 2.6996.001 above the high of yesterday, I would nibble on copper thinking that it is going to have a little bit more of a bounce, but 2.719, 2.717 is the 50 period moving average. I'm not sure this is the move that takes it higher than that. So it's just a bounce. If it was me, I would not be doing anything with copper. That could be a big mistake because the weekly is improving some. So the only way that I would do it, since you asked the question, you are interested in Sean. So I'm going to say yes, but I wouldn't. So is it worth buying it here and putting in a tighter stop? Because if it breaks out, you're already in it. And then you could add another. Ha, ah, this is what I'm going to do. I, it's risky, and I don't know what this trades. I've never traded copper in the future, so I, I just don't know. Could be a huge, huge loss. If it, I'm just saying, if you want to nibble here at 2.68, now, now I have to go to the nine period moving uh, to the 120 minute peak A, peak B. Double top, double top, double top. No, I can't comfortably do that. I think it is going to try for the 2.70, but it might have to dip one more time. And I don't know what the, I don't know what the resistance is. I, I don't know what the spread is. So okay, I, the only way I can do this is say I'm not competent enough to be able to give you uh, um, something that I feel really good with because it's just a technical analysis because it's got a doji candle off the big move yesterday that's a positive but i just don't know what it trades at so this is my thinking if you are looking and you're positive on it and you thought okay i think it's gonna go where's a good entry point i would say right here 2.6875 but i would go to the 100 minute 2.68 i don't even know what it trades at but 2.6867 no more than about seven dips or pips or rips or whatever they call it. I don't know. I don't even know what you trade them at. Would I have as a stop? And if it closes towards the high of the day, you have to have the overnight risk. But if you're able to handle that, if this goes and can trade for an hour and a half above the high of yesterday, above 2.6995, that would be a good sign. And that would suggest that it's going to go somewhere into the low of that candle. 2.7280. Yeah, so we're in the 2.780 area. That would be my target on a very short term basis. Whew, that's a tough one. All right. Next question I had was uh, would I look at, yeah, I'll do that right now. So, what was the question? Uh, oh, V. So, yeah, you remember we had our caller about three weeks ago who was a little nervous about Visa, and I said, you know, I love what I th I'm seeing. I think this is this is walking the 9 EMA. This is a fantastic chart. This is an example of um, that what I call the, it's like a little snail walking up a branch of a tree. It just keeps going and going, little tiny movements, but it keeps going higher and higher and higher and higher. And you could have bought it anywhere, and you'd still be up today.
could you buy today and then be up again? I, that I'm not sure of. But yes, this is leg E in the, in the daily, leg D in the weekly, and leg F slash B in the monthly. Visa is acting 180.61 up a dollar 31. It has to do with interest rates. It has to do with their, 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 their model. Um, it's just been fabulous. I think it's getting close to some kind of resistance. Let me put it into my automated Chapman Wave resistance and support levels. Oh, it's gone right through it in the daily, right through it in the weekly, right through it in the monthly, right through it in the 120 minute chart, and even 181.04. It's gone through that in the 10 minute chart. Um, this is looking, this is looking really good. Uh, that's all I can say is that it's looking really good. Visa, I do believe it'll have a consolidation between 170, it's at 180 right now in the 177 to 175 area over the next two weeks. But that doesn't make it a, a, a short. So it's a, oh, oh yes, all time on. Let me see Mastercard. Wow, they're in the right business. Look at that in like F slash C in the daily all time high. F in the uh, weekly and G slash C in the monthly. I'm certain wow. you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. I just want to, I don't know if Warren is still. Warren, are you there? Yes, Basil. Oh, that's great. Good. I was hoping you'd be able to stay through that break. Um, you want to look at CWCO and Consolidated Water? Yes, that's correct. Sometimes it usually kind of peaks out about this time of the year. Okay, so uh, let me just look at SWK. It's SW. Oh man, am I going to remember what it is? Another very, very w a wonderful water company. SWK. 
Uh, I got your SWK is Black and De Decker. It's MWA. No, it wasn't MWA. That's the other one. Miller Waterworks. Gosh, I can't remember the other one, which is a, a fantastic company. Uh, so you are in. Uh, C C Tell me what you're doing. Oh, I'm in at about 11.43 with a block, and I've been thinking about getting out, and I wanted to see what your wave count is, because it usually peaks out. I kind of use it as a money market fund, this stock, so I want to get out kind of at this time of the year between July 15th and August 15th, maybe earlier, based on what your chart looks like, Basil. So I'm pleased you called right now. So what I'm going to say to you is, why don't you start the process, because that's what you want to do. I've got a peak F in the daily. It's trading at 14.06. CWCO is the symbol of consolidated water. It's an Oleg E, probably a peak E this week in the in the uh, uh, weekly. And then the monthly made a huge peak F back in the 15s, and that was in 2018. But I, what I'm going to say to you, this is in the right area, but they do have these big cyclical moves. So what yeah. I would say to you is you could start the process. Today's Thursday. If you don't mind, I'll do it again tomorrow. Because I want to okay. take a little more time. So in the meantime, yes, start your position. Just take a little bit off here at 1406. Uh, it's just like a, you know, a 60 cents or 50 cents off the the high that was made recently. But I'm not sure that it's just going to dive to the downside because that weekly chart is still good. So that's why I'm saying take something off. I'm going to make a note right now. And maybe if you can even remind me tomorrow, I'll do a little more work on it. But you've had a fabulous move. Bravo. Congratulations. I don't want to change your thinking about it. I'm just saying this could be the start of some kind of a pullback. So this is the time to start taking something off. Okay. Thank you, Basil, for helping me out. Thank you very much for calling. While Warren in Denver looking at CWCO. Hey, what a nice move. Good, good thinking. Uh, folks, the Dow's up 204. I'll be back for the Tom O'Brien show at 4 o'clock. My service is the opening call. Check it out. My newsletter, uh, very comprehensive. And thank you for being here. I'll be back in a few hours. So